We bless the Lord tonight. Let us see if this is going to work. Maybe if, if it is periscope, then there's nothing that I can do about it. But we pray that you're hearing. Good night, Mrs. Welch. Good to see you. Let us see if this works. We give the Lord glory tonight. This is about a third time we make an effort to have this broadcast done. There must be something. Greetings, Prophet. There must be something to be said here. If we have a challenge, then it's better. Hallelujah. Sounds good. All right, then. Some persons could not even get in. Hello, Sister Melturia. Some persons couldn't even get on. It could be Periscope because this is, this is, this, my internet would not be so, so crazy now. Much better. We have two persons here, I'm freezing already. Oh boy. Okay, good. So it could, it could be Periscope or, or I'm not sure could be their server that has a problem or whatever they're using to um, Twitter okay well we in Acts chapter 4 let's go to this high offices with low revelation and truth high offices with low revelation and truth Acts chapter 4 and to understand the the the, the context or the events around in this chapter we're looking at those two apostles Peter and John who, of course, at the hour of prayer, they were going to the temple at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, and there they found this man. Of course, you know it. He was crippled from his mother's womb. And the man was seeking help from them. He was begging for money. Peter fixed his eyes on him and said, Silver and gold we don't have, but whatever I have, I give to you. In the name of Yeshua, get up. Grabbed him by his hand, took him up, and the man got on his feet began to dance and leap his way into the temple. The people around were marveled by it. They were amazed to see the miracle that was performed. And Peter turned and said to them, Why are you amazed by this? Why are you acting as if this were done by our power? This was done by the Lord. While he was speaking to the people, while he was speaking to the people, we get to chapter 4. Okay? Because you'll see chapter 4 verse 1 begins with, And as they were speaking to the people, that is why you don't read your Bible by chapters. You don't read your scriptures like that. Because you can definitely see here this is just a continuation of a thought. While they were still speaking to the people, the priests, high offices, and the temple commander, and the Sadducees stood near them, being distressed because they taught the people and announced in Yeshua the resurrection from the dead. Those with the high offices were distressed when they heard truth. Those with the lofty positions and the, the entire nation of Israel looking up to them for spiritual leadership were in distress when the name of Yeshua and the resurrection of Yeshua was being spoken. Please show you how I read. I read things by if it's, if it's uh, events, his, okay, right, his beautiful flower. I would read an entire thought. For example, if this is speaking to... Uh, okay, Oliver Shepherd, I'll, I'll address that in a minute. If, if, if I'm reading about the man who was healed in Acts chapter 3, I wouldn't stop reading. I continue to see exactly what happened in that entire event. And of course, as the Spirit leads me, then also I would look for scriptures that correspond with that. And you'll find some more, uh, uh, some more insight as you have related texts. Okay? But I can assure you that the scriptures, that's very good, my sister Anne, the scriptures were never written by chapters and verses. Never. Never it happened. When a letter was written to the church, they read the entire letter. Okay? That helps you to not misunderstand things in Scripture, to misrepresent Scripture. Okay, you're most welcome. So here we are, but just for conversation's sake, I'll tell you where I am. And even that, uh, I certainly do pray for those, and I shall remember you, man. 
and also ask the others who are prayerful, those the Periscope family that we, we shared tonight, please remember Oliver Shepherd in prayer. Okay, because if two of us can agree touching anything, it shall be done. Now, Delaware, wow, good, wonderful, welcome. I think I saw you before. So, here you see in verse 1, or verse 2, the leaders, the, the people who consider to be spiritual leaders or those with spiritual authority are in distress they are concerned because of what the apostles are speaking the name they're using the person in whom they, 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 they function that immediately should tell us something good evening from Canada blessings to you blessings to you Melanie the fact that spiritual people Thank you so much. We give the Lord praise. He prays out and I for that. Amen. His spirit in any person makes them speak the truth only. The fact that spiritual leaders or spiritual spirit good morning, that must be from an up from, from the east. Uh, from the UK or somewhere, Miss Granville. Huh? Good yes, ma'am. Good to see you. The fact that spiritual leaders could be concerned when people are speaking truth and speaking of the soundness of their faith speaking to the power of messiah that in itself should give us alarm bells because you would expect these high office these high-ranking officials to be the ones teaching you would expect those who are in high positions to have the authority to teach these are the men now understand clearly here the sadducees the pharisees the scribes and these people the priests these are the men who would have had the, the teachings in their hand, under their control. They had the, the Torah, for example. They had the, the, the uh, Pentateuch, the books of Moses. They had the prophets. They had all of these literature. They had all of the letter. They were highly qualified people, highly qualified in reference to their studies. But when it applied to revelation, they had none. They were highly qualified. They were well respected in reference to human achievement. But in, ref in relation to spiritual matters and insight, they were empty people. They were not, they were not filled on the day of Pentecost. So the, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord was poured out on the people. But the Spirit of the Lord was not poured out on these men, Caiaphas and Annas. God, Obadiah, truth is not what, it's a person, it's who. Truth is not a what, it's an individual. Now, you find the people who have oh, blessings, prophetess, good to see you, T. Thomas, the people who have got all of these all of these ranks, all of these titles, all of this public recognition, they never had the pouring or the inpouring of the Spirit of the Lord on that day. They never had the inpouring of the Lord on that day. God, Obadiah, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just trying to stay on task. All right? The Pilate asked Yeshua, what is the truth? What is truth? And there was no response. Pilate turned and walked away. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. What is the truth? Are you still there, God Obadiah? Since you would have asked.
Right. Yeshua said, Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. You need more? And the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. As the only begotten of the Father. So what is truth? Is it still a what? Or the shadow became the object known to us. Are we clear on that, Gab? If you need more, then we can have another discussion. This is focusing on revelation. And it's important to ask the question. That is why I, I paid attention to you. I, okay. David said in Psalm 119. Psalm 119 speaks to the prophet David, the king speaking under the influence of the spirit. And he spoke to the law. Your eternal righteousness and your law is the truth. So let me give it to you again. The law is that which is spoken of and documented by the hands of the prophets. Here comes Yochanan, John, in chapter 1. He spoke to the church, to the body. He said, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word became flesh. Did I just read it? I just said it. That eternal righteousness and the law is the truth. That's Psalm 1942. So if it's revelation that you seek, I hope that your eyes are open to understand what I've just said to you. The word, behold, I come in the volume of the book that is written of me. I came in the volume of the book that's written of me. What book is that? What books? I came to fulfill the law and the prophets. So is truth a what? Or did, it, or did, it, did he present himself in, as the who? If we are still stuck on the what, then you have no revelation. Because that word became flesh. Okay, you just repeated what I said. Did the law and the statutes, did the word ever come in flesh form to stand before us? The Lord is not, okay. You don't have the word of the Lord and the Lord standing somewhere else. He is one with his word. He is one with his word. And I'm so happy we're getting this tonight. He is one with his word because the word became flesh. He said, I came in the volume of the book as is written of me. That's why the church is in so much trouble. Because we've separated him from his word. We assume that we have his word. We assume we have his word here in our hand. And he's somewhere else. He's not one with what he says. That's why the church is in so much trouble. And that is why I'm grateful that he's led me to address uh, Agado Badaya tonight. He is the word. He didn't give the word and become something else. He is the word that became flesh. That's, that's written right there. It says the word became flesh. And then the word said to us, I am that person that was written. Colossians 2.16 says that the, that was a shadow. Those things of the old were a shadow of what was to come. But Christ, Messiah, is the fulfillment. All right, God, that's enough time now. You can, my name is Nigel London. Find me privately. I've addressed you from scripture. If you can't receive it, that's it. For this proves it. The Lord says to me, the Lord said to me clearly that when you are, when you are, and this is no disrespect to you, I'm just telling you the truth. If you cannot receive this here, you will not hold other people's house for the time. I give you the scripture, you can't receive it. The scripture is very clear that Yeshua came in the, he, he presented himself. This is the word before you. And they couldn't receive it. He told his apostles in Luke chapter 20, at the end of Luke, he said, it was documented, where he said, listen, everything that was written of the prophets, I am the person. And he also said to them that, or the scripture records, he had to open their minds that they may understand that all the things in scripture were written about that were talking about him. So without us being open, you can't receive truth. So here we go again. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, that's good. If you listen, maybe you'll receive it by the end of the night, God, and others. 
In Acts 4, here you have men of great reputation, but no revelation. They couldn't see things spiritually. They could not relate to things that were truly spiritual. They had the letter of the law, but they never received the person, the word. That's why I'm so important. That's why this is so important. They had the letter, they had the documentation, but they could not receive the presentation of the person. So they had Genesis, they had Exodus, they had Leviticus, they had Numbers, they had Deuteronomy, they had Joshua, they had Judges, they had Ruth, they had Obadiah, they had Jeremiah, they had Eli they had all the writings of the prophets. But they could not receive the word. They even had David. But when, when all of that, when, oh my God, when all of the prophets and all of the Torah, the teachings, the mitzvah, the laws, came into a person and stood before them, they said, you have to die. You are of the devil. <laughs> Ooh. When all of the words, when all of the writing became flesh and stood before them, they could not receive because the truth is revealed. Because Yeshua is revealed. He's not read. He is revealed. Oh my God. The church, hear me. The true ecclesia of the Lord. You were told only those who have seen him will not continue living in sin. That's why he spoke about faith being the evidence of things, the substance of things hoped for. That word substance speaks about a platform on which you stand. The conviction which is evidence of things not seen. When Yehoshua came in, the, in, in the, the embodiment of prophecy, the embodiment of the law, the embodiment of everything written came and stood before these men. They could not receive him. They could not believe what they saw. Because as far as they were concerned, oh, okay, we'll go here tonight. As far as they were concerned, what they expected, remember the scripture said that, should have been somebody who was in a lofty position higher than they were. So if, if these men, the, the Caiaphas and Annas and these guys, if these men had their wonderful seats in the, in the important places as a priest, remember now, these are, these are the high-ranking officials in Israel. So if Messiah is going to come, he can't come sitting on a seat lower than us. Messiah couldn't come on a seat lower than ours. Messiah has to look better than us. Because this has to be by appearance. Yes, what they saw. Because they had no revelation. And when they read Moses, they read with a veil over their eyes, according to Corinthians. They could never see him. They could never see Messiah for who he is. And even today in our society, the people who carry the greatest titles, for example, Pope Francis and all the others before him, could not see Messiah for who he is. They can't receive him. They will talk about him, but they could never have him. He was never revealed to them. They go by perception. They go by what they see. I have to see him I have to see him, watch this, in reference to how I see me. If I see him in a lower rank than I see myself, he could never be the Messiah. That's how these men function. When I sit on my throne, Caiaphas said, when I sit on my throne, and you show up here, born in a manger, a carpenter's son, you could never be. You could never be the Messiah. Because you are less than me in reference to how you look. You never came to our, our, our synagogue and sat in our schools in reference to teach us teaching you. you ne we didn't teach you anything. You were not our student. We had no control over how you thought. Little did they know that that which they read and that which they studied and that which they were examined about was right before them in the flesh. The word became flesh. 
and they could not receive it and they could not handle that which they once manipulated on parchment <laughs> oh thank you lord they could not receive that which they once controlled on parchment so many people in the church today cannot receive because in their minds they have created a god that does whatever they want functions by their principles and they promote themselves they promote themselves they promote themselves without his approval without his grace they give each other titles they give each other ranks and they just call themselves whatever they want to call themselves in the groups and then they claim that this God has approved of them and made them to function but how do you test them what truth do they hold what revelation do they have if we can't even receive a person's cannot even receive or God himself could not receive that the word is a person we are in tr that truth is an individual we're in trouble people are in trouble if we can't receive that truth is an individual who was once written about he, he, he set them up he made them write so many things about himself for example David himself went through it David was betrayed by, 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 by somebody who was close to him and David the prophet began to write about his experience hear me David was, was betrayed and David began to write about his experience, not knowing that he's prophesying about Messiah. So the prophet David is having a bad day because of how people treated him. He said, the one who ate with me betrayed me. Little did he know that his, prophet, that his experience in the natural was a prophecy. The, the, the Apostle Paul said, David did not know. He didn't even realize that he was writing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we have to understand here. We have to understand here that without revelation of who he is, we would have letter. But we'll never have life. We will have words on a paper, on a book. But we'll never have life. So before we keep pushing for, or people keep pushing for position in the church, maybe we should seek to have revelation of who he is. Because if we cannot receive the truth about who he is when it's lifted from the book then that person has no revelation they're blind if persons cannot have a revelation of who he is from the book you're in trouble we are in serious trouble and I'm seeing so many people pop on the screens of my phone and on my television all right i think god obadiah needs it tonight you're asking for it i'm trying to help you out because you go to revelation 1 13 or 14 and say and you would say that yeshua was black because his hair was white as wool now it's obvious that you fail your english class because his hair was white as wool speaks to texture not not color not not uh, speak to color not texture white as wool that's a hue. It doesn't say his hair was curly as wool. It was white as wool. For example, white as snow. His hair was not snow. Good.
So let's get it clear. So let's keep moving on. Revelation. Insight. Understanding. Without that, and I'm so happy that someone who's speaking of the law is here. Don't go anywhere. Stay right where you are. Don't leave now. Stay right here. Because those who handled the law could not handle him when he showed up before them. Don't move. Stay right here. Those Pharisees, the Caiaphas, Annas, priests, John, Alexander, when they saw him, they had all the law, but they couldn't receive who he was. And to this day, whoever has law, whoever lives by law and is not saved by grace, you are still blind. You still can't see him. That is why you would look you would look for physical attributes. He had to be, he had to have a great throne. He had to have a golden throne. He had to sit on something bigger than mine. Then it had to be now, okay, if I am black, his hair had to be black like mine. If he's not, if he's not a black man like me, I can't receive him. Physical, physical, for man, flesh, looks at the appearance. Man is bound by appearance. Flesh. <laughs> flesh is governed by appearance. Spirit is where revelation comes from. Yochanan said, I was in the spirit, not flesh, on the Lord's day. And everything he saw, he saw in the spirit, not flesh. You stuck in flesh talking about people skin color. A white man who doubts Messiah is in sin. A black man who doubts Messiah is in sin. A yellow man who doubts Messiah is in sin. A brown man who doubts Messiah is in sin. But if all of them believe on Messiah, they live. So get over yourself with your complexion. Your color doesn't make you righteous. The very ones you say are black here didn't believe him. But all oh, the scripture did say, the scripture did say, that I will cause those he said to the church, Revelation 2 9, who say they are, they are Jews but they lie, I will cause them to come and bow to you because they are of the synagogue of Satan. So I know them, I know the false Jews now, don't, don't play with that. Don't go anywhere, stay right here. So, so here we have a situation where the Pharisees, where, where, where Caiaphas and the priests could not believe or could not understand how this man, Yeshua, died. We lied about his, his, his resurrection. We said that somebody stole his body. We paid the soldiers to lie. How could these men still be preaching in this name? So let's move on to verse 3. And when they had laid hands, when they had laid hands on them and put them in prison or in custody until the morrow, for it was evening already, they laid hands on Peter and John and say, okay, then we're going to arrest y'all. But many of those hearing the word believed. So these priests were late. Since when they decided to arrest the men, it was too late. <laughs> You already had persons believing. They already heard about Yeshua. They already heard about the resurrection. So they already believed. So they could, they could arrest too. They could physically hold too. But they could not. But they could not contain the faith of those who heard. They could physically hold two men. But they could not Blessings clouded. They could not hold the faith. They couldn't arrest the faith of the multitudes who already believed. People already saw the miracle. People already heard about Yeshua. People already heard that he was raised from the dead, unlike these, these liars who said that he was hidden in a tomb all the time. So the people's faith was already high. 
the people already really received truth. And these, these high-ranking officials sought to arrest the two. My God, I'm freezing. I don't want to do that tonight. Are we good? Are we clear? Okay, so let's see what happened next. Verse 4. They believe. Verse 5. The number given in verse 4 is 5,000. 5,000 men. About 5,000 men believed on this one account. Oh my God, I don't want to freeze now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it still frozen or are we good? Let me go out and come. Should I go out and come back in or somebody else should do this? Should I restart, do another broadcast? Somebody who's at home with me, tell me what to do. Somebody who's in the house, tell me what I'm to do. In and out. Praise Adonai. Praise Adonai. All right, let's pick this up again. Am I flowing? Is it good? Choppy. I don't want to. Free. I don't want to stop. Oh, the Lord knows I don't want to stop. I guess we've been... Re okay, good. <laughs> We're good for now. Okay. About 5,000 men, 5,000 men are, are, are believed in one instant. 5,000 men believe in one instant. And the high priests, the highest ranking... The highest ranking religious officials still don't believe. I've lost sound now. All right, let me go ahead and come back in. <laughs> 